Hello there everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back once again to my F122 My Team Career Mode journey. We are heading now into the latter stages of the season, starting here at the Italian Grand Prix. This championship fight is an intense one. I urge you to stick it out to the end. We are leading by just a fraction coming here to Italy. And I will be saying this, we are going to take a load of component penalties here. So I've basically taken one more of everything and decided that I will take the penalty pain right here in Italy. It's a circuit that on this game in particular I have struggled with just a little bit anyway. So I kind of figured if there was anywhere that's a good place to take the penalty, it's here at Monza. Right then, we're just doing a couple of laps in Q1 just to get a feel for the car. And obviously just see if I can find a rhythm round here that works for me. I wasn't particularly pushing, as you can see we're a second off and we were P13. I definitely have more in the tank than what I was showing. And I feel like even though we're going to be starting from the back, we can fight our way back to points. Hey, maybe it'll be like France and I luck into a win through, I don't know, strategic genius or lucky timing. You tell me what you think of it. In fact, go back and check France out and then let me know what your thoughts on that are. But as you can see, we're just letting the qualifying time out run down. So we are starting at the back. It's time for the Italian Grand Prix once again here at the beloved and iconic Autodroma Nazionale di Monza. With the lowest downforce and drag of any circuit in the season, expect to see drivers making the most of the slipstream effect here today. With top speeds up to 215 and an average lap speed of around 155 miles per hour, Monza's reputation of one of the fastest circuits in the sport is well earned. We have 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track with the best overtaking chance coming into the heavy braking zone of the Turn 1 chicane. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Magnussen, Norris, Max Verstappen and Tictum, Sainz, Perez, Albon and Lewis Hamilton, Gasly, Latifi, Mick Schumacher and Stroll, Sonoda, Ocon, Robert Schwartzman and Sebastian Vettel. Deruvala, Drogovic, Joe and Joker. That's it then. It's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll see. With Charles Leclerc right at the front of the field, I feel like damage limitation is the aim of the game here. As we start lining up on the grid, you can see the rest of the cars are just forming up. What is, what is happening there? Uh, uh, okay, so it appears that I have parked on the grid in a manner of... What? Why has that happened? Uh, uh, sir, you can't park there. Whatever, it's the start of the Italian Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. But as we straighten up, we're obviously going to lose a little bit of time on the straight. But hopefully we don't lose too much. 
I break late, I try and stick up the inside, try and gain what I can, but obviously there's no room there. I've been squeezed, and I am actually down to last place. That's a little bit wide there going onto the gravel. But we are now through the first corner, and it's time to see what we can make of this race. We've got Drogovic and Schwartzman going side by side into the chicane there. We're going to try and nip me on the outside. And we have actually managed to get past Schwartzman. And unlike Belgium, there wasn't a nasty crash when we passed Robert. He just let me go quite cleanly. Okay, next up is Drogovic. These guys should be relatively easy to pick off. And in fact, Drogovic should be... We should have him on the straight here. Just look at the difference in straight line speed between the Williams and the Joe H2O car. I'm um, having to tuck in behind Joe Guan Yu there. I couldn't quite get past him, but we're going to try and have a look into the parabolic and maybe on the way out. He's tucked up behind Ocon and Daruva. And in fact, this is three cars down the straight. Am I going to be able to blast past all of them? There's nowhere for me to go. Every part of the track, there's a car occupying it. I am having a look at potentially diving down the inside. We did tap. The Williams and Ocon's made contact with Daruvula, so he's going to be a little bit compromised on the exit. That gives me a chance to use overtake and try and sweep around the outside of the Curva Grande. Ocon only just about leaving me the width of a car to squeeze through, but that is the car's width that we need, and we managed to take P19. Next up is Yehan Daruvula in the Alfa Romeo, and we're going to dance around the outside of the first Lesmo. Daruvula still there, still trying to hang on down the inside. I've gone deep. Daruvula keeping the position. There is a bit of wheel banging, but Daruvula defending it well. But I'm going to use the little bit of space I have here down the straight, going back up the hill. And by the time we get to Ascari, we have gained the place. Stroll's got a five-second penalty, so I'm not quite sure how he's upset the stewards in this race. But already they've seen something that Lance isn't happy with. You'd think Lawrence would be like, look, here's a couple of hundred thousand euro. Nothing happened. Capiche? Right, Zhou Guan Yu looked a little bit unsettled out of the Parabolica. And that was the only invitation we needed to get past into 17. So we have gained five positions in this opening couple of laps. About to become six because we're now going to get past Stroll. And again, the speed difference we have is pretty significant significant enough to see us through next up is Mick Schumacher he's tucked up behind Yuki Sonoda and he looked a little bit unstable going out of Ascari so this allows us a look potentially around the outside of Parabolica Schumacher trying to hold a defensive line but we've gone around the outside and we're going to switch to the inside because Sonoda didn't look too convincing out of there and we're going to try it up and under him also Sebastian Vettel directly ahead of us as we go for a fastest lap can we nip the pair of them? Answer is no. Vettel parking his car on the apex, doing a great job of holding us back. But we were able to pass Sonoda, and Schumacher has followed us past Sonoda. Right, next up, down to Ascari. Vettel not giving me in a lot of room, but we use what we can take. And down the inside of Ascari we go, up into P13. So we have made some pretty good gains here. And we're just carrying on this momentum as we now move up to Pierre Gasly in 12th. Again, taking a very defensive line into Parabolica. But we're going to sweep down the outside of Pierre Gasly with a bit of late braking. Gasly is dispatched. Next up is the indisputable GOAT. The absolute greatest of all time, Nicholas Latifi in P11. How are we going to do this? I'm fancying a bit of DRS down the back straight here. And you know what? Out of the second Lesmo, he definitely looked a little unstable. The car not quite getting the grip he wanted. And look at the speed difference. I think he didn't quite get a good exit, which is what allowed us to maintain the momentum. And that is P11. Next up is Alex Albon. And that will put us into the point. And we're only on lap seven, so I'm definitely feeling... There is potential for a podium, maybe, in this race. Latifi's coming back at me. He's going to try and go around the outside of the Parabolica. But that's not happening. I fended him off there. He is going to have DRS down the pit straight. But I think we can just about cover him off. 
Hamilton's battling someone up ahead of him. I can't see who it is. All I can see is Alex Albon dead in front of us. Are we going to be able to have a look at the Parabolica? No, that's just, that's not going to work. Sainz is there with Hamilton. And they're just banging wheels at this point. Sainz is looking like he's peeling into the pits. And we've had to break because the Sainz peeled to the pits and break. If we didn't break, we would have gone straight into the back of the Mercedes. And as for the momentum we've lost, that's allowed Alex Albon back up a place. But I'm taking that straight back. As we now have Perez and Verstappen going side by side just ahead of us. God, it's all happening here, isn't it? Right. Let's try and get ourselves focused back on this race again. Lewis Hamilton is next. He is in PA. I'm having a little look at his scarring, but that's not going to happen there. For Stapler, Hamilton, sorry, having that too well covered. And we may have to wait until the pit straight before we have another chance at going for it. So I'm going to save what I can of overtake and have a major attack on the pit straight. We go into Parabolica. It's going to take a good run out of here. And I think we have got that. Lewis having a little bit of a wobble in the middle of the corner. And is he going to go defensive? He does, but we're going to go to the left. And Hamilton almost veering back onto the racing line here. I managed to be quite forceful as we go around the outside. And Perez once again fighting Verstappen. So Max not looking too fast because Perez, clearly the faster of the two Red Bulls at this point. He's now going defensive, though, because he's got to defend me. Uh, well, he pretty much just let me go there. He just didn't fight me at all. It's like he peeled off and was just like, after you, sir. Right, next up is Verstappen. We're going to try and get past him. Then it's Lando Norris in P5. So we're already into the P6. And this is before we've even pitted. And I reckon down this pit straight, we should have Max Verstappen. We've got DRS, we've got Overtake, we've got a nice little slipstream, Max goes defensive, I'm going to go to the outside, and I think that should be the move done, it is the move done, up into P6. Although Max is now trying to come back at me around the outside of the curve of Grande, is it a Grande move for Verstappen? He's still holding the inside there, is he going to have the inside for the chicane? I've given him the room and Max has kind of run me out of road a little bit. And Verstappen keeping the position. That is some great driving by the Red Bull driver. And it's, well, I mean, are we surprised? It's Max Verstappen. Although I am going to be on, I'm going to be honest, that was a cheeky run to the outside he forced me with there. But now we're going to go back at him. We're going to come back at him. He defends the inside. I'm going to do to him what I did to his teammate. Sweep around the outside. Max having to break, realising he was going in very tight there. And that is the position for us. Right, so fresh out the pits on hard tyres now. And I'm hoping our undercut can bring us a little bit closer to the guys in front. We're going to set some monster times here. And we completed a lap and we're already a couple of seconds clear of the Red Bull and Verstappen. Latifi has got up a place as well, although I don't know if that's just him having not pitted yet. I don't know. Have I got that much of a gap on him already? Right, another fastest lap of the race for us, and that's Lando Norris coming out of the pit. So that mighty fastest lap time we've set, that's brought us not only into the top five, but nicely so. We've jumped Lando Norris. We're now right on the back of Dan Tictum in the McLaren. And we're up into P5. And I'm just wondering, what can we achieve from this race? Well, I'll tell you someone who's not going to be achieving from this race, and that is Sebastian Vettel. The Aston Martin is pulling off. That is done for the day. Sebastian Vettel is done, but Dan Tictum, he's still there, but he's very wobbly around the Parabolica, and I'm forcing my way to the inside. Tictum's holding himself down the straight. We have got the extra momentum we need, and we're going to power straight past the McLaren, up into P4, solid overtake. Next up is our teammate George Russell ahead of us. And I'm going to be honest, there is a potential. We, can we win this race? Are we fast enough? It all depends on how far ahead of the McLaren of Kevin Magnussen, Charles Leclerc is. 
I think there is a few seconds in it, but we need to make sure we get past quickly. First things first, let's see if our teammate George Russell is going to make this easy. He goes quite defensive. We're going to try and sweep around the outside and, yeah, well, he may as well just let us through there. Cheers, George, for not making that one too difficult. Next up is Kevin Magnuson and Leclerc is within six seconds of us. It's going to take a mighty, mighty effort to win this one. But you know what? We've got a great car around here. It is feeling so good. And I am feeling good. Right, here we go. Kevin Magnuson in P2. We're having that look. Magnuson getting a little bit unsure of the brakes into the Parabolica. But we're right in his slipstream here. And this should be P2. It's going to be P2. With six laps to go. Can we catch four seconds on Charles Leclerc? As we quite effortlessly breeze into P2. We're clobbering the curb the way we did there. That's not going to help. But are we going to be able to make any kind of inroads on Charles Leclerc? Kevin Magnuson's coming back at me here. He's trying to fight me back for second, but it's not going to happen. Magnuson, I think, trying to find a way back into the championship fight. But he just doesn't really have the car for it. Final lap. There's a second and a half, so he might be able to have a go. Um, we've gone out a bit wide, though, and we've lost a bit of time doing that. Not to mention there is the back marker of Schwartzman right there as well. And in fact, given that little mistake we made, we are now down to two seconds behind. It would have taken a mighty first sector and Schwartzman not being there to have had a shot. But what a comeback this has been from the back of the grid to P2. And in terms of the championship, that really does limit the damage that Leclerc can do. Okay, I think he's going to take the lead of the standings for his performance here, but it's still P2 for us and the fastest lap, limiting the amount of points he can take from us. Moving forwards, this championship fight, it's definitely just, it's really heating up here. Every point is critical. But today, it's a win for Charles Leclerc, who was absolutely untouchable all the way through the race. P2 for us, though, in a fastest lap. Yes, Maybe yes, with a few on. more laps in the race, we might have been able to catch him. We nearly went into him there on our slowing down lap. I'm not sure what that was. But it's P2, and I'm happy with that. They made great use of the clear air today, then, and didn't allow anyone to exploit the slipstream behind them. What a great win here at Monza. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe, a world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. So let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Charles well, despite a forceful comeback from us that standings. put us so just under a second and a half today, behind the leader with a fastest lap, it is a win today for Charles Leclerc, and that will edge him just ahead in the championship. Kevin Magnussen in third, trying to edge his way back in, but it just it just isn't enough. George Russell, our teammate, securing fourth, and then it's Norris Verstappen, Tickton Perez, Latifi and Signs rounding out the top ten. Wow, Mercedes 10th and 12th. How the mighty have fallen. And as you can see in the championship, Leclerc now leads, but it's by three points. 
The championship lead changes again. Will it change again next time out in Singapore? I'm going all out for the next few races now. This is it. Every race has to be perfect for us. We are going after this championship. Magnussen in third is now 61 points adrift. Still within an odd shout if he can turn it around, but it's looking unlikely now. Thank you for watching this installment of Career Mode. As always, don't forget to leave a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Until then, TTFN guys, ta-ta for now.